Amen. Glory to God. We're so excited to be here for today as we're continuing our series, Living in Glass Houses, Living in Glass Houses. So I saved this piece for us because we're so used to singing something from the 40s. Um, so on today, uh, just to tie into what we're going to be teaching on, which is we're teaching today on looking through, looking through. And as we teach on looking through, go ahead and turn your Bibles to Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to study this word on today, God. We thank you so much for this opportunity to come and, and to sit at your feet and to study what you have for us. God, as we study on looking through uh, in our series on living in glass houses. And we thank you, Father, that peace be within our homes and prosperity within our walls as we cast down every evil imagination that tries to exalt itself against the fear and knowledge of Jesus Christ and that tries to hinder us from hearing your word on this day. Lord, we are determined to follow you all the way. And in our determination, Father, we're saying to search us, O oh God. Search us, O oh God. And if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and straighten me. Because we want to be right, we want to be saved, and we want to be whole. So you're right on today. Hallelujah. That's the song that we're going to sing. And it's an old song by Thomas Dorsey, and it goes, Oh, search me, search me, Lord. Oh, search me, search me, Lord. Shine a light from heaven on my soul. And if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and straighten me. I want to be right, I want to be safe, I want to be well. Oh, search me, search me, Lord. Search me, search me, Lord. Shine a light from heaven on my soul. And if you find anything that shouldn't be, Take it out and straighten me. I wanna be right. I wanna be safe. I wanna be well. Well, you know when I'm right, and you know when I'm wrong. Oh, you know where I go, and you know where I belong. You know what I do, oh, and you know my living secrets too, oh, search me, touch me, cleanse me, Lord, through and through, oh, search me, search me, Lord, search me, search me, Lord, shine a light from heaven. Oh my soul, and if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and straighten me. I want to be saved, I want to be right, I want to be well. Hallelujah! Amen. That's just something a little in the back in the day. As we now turn to Psalm 139, we're going to read from the New Living Translation. Um, Psalm 139. It says, O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts, even when I'm far away. And so as today we're talking about living in glass houses, we're talking about looking through. And the psalm writer starts out here, David in Psalm 139, saying, God, you have examined my heart. That means you have looked. And you know, we talk about examination. 
And examination is not just glancing at something. It is taking an in-depth study, an in-depth look. When you go to a doctor, you expect for him to do what? Examine you. That doesn't mean that you just sit there on the table with all of your clothes on and they don't even go and take a, a stethoscope to see how your hear how your heart is beating. Um, that they don't even do a little reflex test or anything. If you go into a doctor's office and they don't do anything but say, hey there, and start talking about the weather, then you haven't been examined. And here the psalm writer is saying, God, Lord, my Savior, my King, you have examined me. You have examined me, and not so much in my flesh, but we know what God is examining. He is examining the heart. That means he's examining our, our inner thoughts, our inner will. I mean, those things about us. He says, you have examined my heart. And know everything about me. And you know, when we talk about that examine, that word here is also a word that means searched. And that means to you, you have explored my heart. You have thoroughly examined me. You have searched out and you have found out anything that's in my heart. And this is what we mean about living in glass houses. Because our soul, our heart, our will, and our emotions, they are revealed to God. He's looking through the glass and seeing everything that is hidden in every crevice of our heart. And so we give God praise and glory and honor because if no one else knows us, he ought to know us. When we talk about our friends and our parents and saying, they don't understand me. They don't love me. They don't understand me. I hear that from teenagers. They just don't care. They don't understand what I'm going through. They don't know. But here we find the word of God, Psalm 139, that says the Lord knows. The Lord knows your heart. The Lord knows the things that you're going through. The Lord knows the struggles that we face. He searches our heart. He searches those things that we're meditating on. He searches out the intricacies of all the intricacies of all the things that we're going through. My tongue's a little tight, but he's searching all of those little things out in us. And we thank God that he knows this. Remember the hairs on our head are even numbered. These are the, in, the things that God knows about us. So the songwriter is saying that, hey, he's the one that searched these things out. He examined them thoroughly concerning us and that is our heart it didn't say he examined our clothes it doesn't say he examined our fingernails it says that he examines the heart remember we talked on last week on last time that man looks at the outer appearance but god looks at the what you all can talk back to me god looks at the heart he examines the heart to see if there is any wicked way in us. God looks at the heart. So we go on here to say in Psalm 139. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. And again, we're reading from the New Living Translation. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything. Did that word say everything? You know everything that I do. Remember the eyes of the Lord are in every place and they're beholding the good and the evil, even the thoughts. Amen. We're going to get into this, but he tells us here that when I sit up and when I, when I stand up and when I sit down, you know it. There is nothing hidden from God. And that's why we can say that we're living in glass houses. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. Now, isn't that amazing? You know what I'm going to say even before I say it. Because remember, 
the scriptures tell us it's not what goes into a man that defiles him it's what comes out of a man that defiles him and so out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so that means that we had to meditate on that thing think about that thing and then we said it verbally so things just don't oops out there are things that we could have been considering in our heart our subconscious and meditating on that god is having to deal with so he says here in psalm 139 verse 4 lord you know what i'm going to say before i even say it verse 5 you go before me and follow me you place your hand of blessing on my head now we got to think about this he blesses us in our going out and in our coming in he knows where we're going and so along the highway when we think about the dangers highways and byways that people will talk about in prayers we'll just say lord protect me along the dangerous highways we never know the plan of the enemy that is set for us but the god that we serve protects us and he says when i go out you go before me and then you're with me when i'm going because remember the word says that god never leaves us nor does he forsake us and then he says you are also my rear guard that i don't even have to look back because i know that as i'm moving forward you're taking care of anything that is trying to come at my back remember he's the same one that talks about the fiery darts of the wicked and we know that those fiery darts are protected by by the shield of faith and we know that it's also protected by the breastplate of righteousness and that breastplate of righteousness we've studied in times past that the breastplate covers not just the front of the body but it covers the back also it covers down where the lungs and kidneys are because remember it has to have an even weight in order for it to be I mean, for the person to move is just not on the front of their bodies and that roman soldiers when we talk about putting on that armor that that armor was one that was made like fish scales so that it could bend with them so he says hey god you have been with me in every area you've covered my front you covered my back and your hand has been upon my head the helmet of salvation god's hand being upon us that we would think soberly of how we need to go out and come in he said god this is all what you've done such knowledge is too wonderful for me such knowledge is too wonderful for me my god you such knowledge is too wonderful he says i don't even know how to understand it i can't even comprehend because it's so vast it's so extraordinary god i i, I can't even express it in words it's just so too wonderful for me to even express and this is what the psalm writer david here is saying as he's understood that even when his heart is thinking something contrary to the word of god that still god has been with him god has gone before him god has even been on his rear guard after him he says i can never escape your spirit I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there, your hand will guide me and your strength will support me isn't this awesome about god that he knows what we need and that we have such a great need of him that he won't leave us alone this is so precious to us and so david as he 
is writing this song. He's thinking about it. He's thinking about all of the things that he's been through and how God has been there with him. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the night and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. God can see all things. We're truly living in glass houses. There is nothing concerning our thoughts, nothing concerning our physical presence, nothing concerning our conversation that God doesn't know. He says in verse 13, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. And think about this again. He says, I am so complex. But God, you're the one who made me like that. And we think about it. There are certain things our I remember a friend of mine did a study on the hand and talked about how there are certain parts of just this hand that you can do things like holding a pressure on the thumb that will help to stop migraines and how one finger, the main bloodline goes through that finger and how even the nerves that are in our feet and how the, the doctor can look at our toes and tell whether or not there is something going on elsewhere in our body. How a physician can look in our eyes and look and say, well, something else is going on in our body, whether it's with our kidneys or our liver, just by looking in our eyes. This is how David is saying, we are so wonderfully made. We are delicately made. Just to think about it, we have the strength in our elbows to break boards, yet we can step the wrong way in a hole and ruin our leg where we can't even walk and be paralyzed. This is how delicate we are, but God made us so wonderfully. We have compassion. We can experience love. We can experience trust and hope. And then we can be so mean that we can kill our own brother. This is how wonderfully made we are. And David said, my soul basically knows this. Verse 15. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb. God saw us. We were not hidden to him. Not one fingernail. Not one nerve. Not one atom or molecule went without God noticing. That's just how special and precious we are to him. Remember, even the scientists can prove it. And doctors will share that even our fingerprints are unique. Our eye patterns are unique. Our teeth formed in our bodies are so unique that they can pinpoint a person just by the bite marks. This means that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. But it also means that God knows everything about us. We're living in a glass house. You saw me before I was born, verse 16 says. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. The Lord knows, remember, our going out and our coming in. He said, you know my uprising, you know my down line. We're living in a glass house. We are not hidden before God. And this is a good thing. We don't have to hide from him. We can express what's going on in our situations because he knows already before we even say a word. 
even when the enemy comes up against us and has us think in another kind of way, God already knows that it's trying our last nerve. He already knows what we're thinking about our faith because the enemy is coming to do what? Try to attack our faith. That's it right there. He's trying to attack our faith. He says in verse 17, how precious are your thoughts about me? This is where worship began. When we stop and think about how God placed us together and forget about how we're feeling right now, forget about a, a, a pain or a, a discomfort in our body. If we just think about how he made us, uniquely that before we were formed he had already thought about this being put this way this being our hair color that being our eye color all of these things were in the thought of God concerning us he thinks about us continually so David just had to go ahead and worship him he says how precious are your thoughts about me oh God they cannot be numbered I can't even count them. They are outnumbered. They outnumber the thoughts that God has concerning us. Outnumber the grains of sand. Isn't that awesome? Every second, God already has it planned for us. It outnumbers the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Isn't that something? When we wake up, from whatever it is we're going through, God is still with us. He says in verse 19, Oh God, if only you would destroy the wicked. Now he goes on to say, Lord, all of these things you're doing toward me, but I remember I have some enemies that are enemies to my soul. They are enemies to the kingdom life that you have for me here on earth. He said, if only you would destroy the wicked. Get out of my life, you murderers. Remember, David talked about how his enemies compassed about him like bees to destroy him. They were hating on David because of the call that God had on his life to do work in ministry for the kingdom. Oh, Lord. He says, they blaspheme you. Your enemies misuse your name. Oh, Lord, shouldn't I hate those who hate you? Shouldn't I despise those who oppose you? And he answers, yes, I hate them with total hatred. I know this because for your enemies are my enemies. Those that speak against God, he says, they speak against me too. Search me, oh God. Examine me, oh God. And know my heart. Test me. And know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. This is the prayer that we pray on today. Because the Lord knows our thoughts. And he knows our heart. And when we're asking the Lord to search us, we're asking him to do a work in us that only he can do. Only he is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of our heart. It is God's word that is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it divides asunder those thoughts and intents. When we went over to the scripture in our closing on last time in Hebrews chapter 4 verses 12 and 13. About how the word of God is quick and powerful and that's where you find that at. That it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And it even talks about the separation of the marrow and the bone. And the marrow is the place in our bodies where red blood cells are produced. So it's the core of the life of our flesh. Because blood is the life of the flesh. He says here, God, you know 
everything about me. God, search me. Examine me, God. And anything that's not like you, cleanse me, O oh God, of it. On today, our prayer, Father, we thank you that we can come before you because you sent Jesus Christ into this world not to condemn us, but that through him we would be saved. So the blood of Jesus comes to present us faultless before you with exceeding joy. The blood of Jesus comes to cleanse our hearts and our minds. And the word of God is placed upon us in our hearts and in our minds by meditating on it day and night that it would make our way prosperous and we would have good success. So, Father, as we live in this glass house where nothing we do is hidden from you, Father, we put clothes on to try to hide our sins. God, we put curtains up to try to hide our sins. But, Lord, you see our uprising and you see our laying down. Father, we welcome the ministry of the Holy Spirit to cleanse us and teach us as it would have us to do. Father, we repent even now for those things that we did in the dark that we thought were not uh, you were not aware of. And God, even how we appreciate you that your mercy has been outstretched to us still because you could have cut us off in our sin. You could have cut us off in our rebellion you could have cut us off in our disobedience. But God, your hand was outstretched toward us still. So Lord, whether we ride upon the, the clouds or we find ourselves in a pit of destruction, Lord, you are there. And we thank you that you see us and you know what we need. And you told us just to call upon you. And so we come honestly before our God. And we express, God, that the enemy has fought, fought us in many ways. And the enemy has tried to keep us encumbered about with doing many things. But Lord, on this day, we choose to repent and do the first work of seeking first the kingdom of heaven and the heaven's righteousness. That all of the things that we need will be added unto us. So we thank you, God, for salvation and we thank you for deliverance. We thank you for healing and we thank you for power. For Lord, you promised us that we would have life and that more abundantly in you and so we thank you father that we receive those great and precious promises and we're determined to keep holding on to your hand hallelujah and lord we pray for those now who do not know you in the pardon of their sins father we pray for those oh god who have turned their back from the truth and chose, O oh God, to go another way. Father, we pray that the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, God, operate in their lives. Word, have your work, for no man comes except he be drawn. So we speak now the drawing power in this earth that they would come and be saved in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The song says, I have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back the world behind me 
the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back, and so on today. Don't you turn back in the name of Jesus, for truly he is searching, looking through and through, searching your heart to see whether you be in the faith. Hallelujah. As we prepare ourselves now in our giving, remember that we have our cash app is dollar sign SWF1500, SWF1500. Sure, that Sure Word Fellowship 1500, because we're located at 1500 Northwest 143rd Street here in Gainesville. Glory to God. Zip 32606. You'll find all of that on our homepage. And that we also uh, do the PayPal as well as some other means. Of course, the mail does it also. But we want to just bless the Lord on today, even in our giving. It says to bring an offering and give him the glory that is due unto his name. And so we thank God for this opportunity that we have to give because he first gave to us. And so God loves a cheerful giver. And so we want to do it cheerfully. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We want to do this cheerfully. We want to do it expediently unto his name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. You bring me an uh, envelope, please, sir. Amen. And so as we're doing that, glory to God, we're just going to. Remember that there is nothing that our God has not withheld from them that walk up rightly before him. He says, no good thing will he withhold. Glory to God. So it may be a matter of time before it manifests in your life, but he didn't withhold it. Glory to God, because he's a God that doesn't lie. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for those that are tithing on today also. Lord, you said that you would rebuke the devourer for our sake. The Lord of hosts, the fighting God, the God, the Lord of the armies, glory to God. And so we thank you, Father, for you rebuking the devourer for our sake. Lord, we thank you for you opening up the windows of heaven, pouring out for us a blessing that we don't even have room enough to receive. Father, we thank you that, God, you're opening doors, glory to God. God, that you are opening way, making ways, oh God. And in the deserts, and oh God, that you are opening up watering places for us, oh God, that we may drink, glory to God, of the fountain, hallelujah. And we thank you, Father, that as we're giving on today, God, that we're giving unto the kingdom, hallelujah. And we thank you, God, that you're calling men to call us a delightsome land, glory to God, and that you are blessing us, oh God exceedingly and abundantly above what all we could ask or even think according to the power that works in us and here it is some giving power because the same measure in which we meet it will be measured back unto us pressed down shaking together and running over do you cause men to give unto our bosom so we declare god what your word says hallelujah and lord god there is no lack and no want to them oh god who fear you so every cupboard is filled and every bill is paid hallelujah we thank you for healing for it is the children's bread in jesus name amen hallelujah glory to god hallelujah i'm gonna sing a little more of that one i have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow jesus no turning back no no turning back amen peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces as we send you out blessed kept protected in the word and in the power of jesus christ for truly as we live in this glass house it is the Lord that covers us. He goes before us. He is behind us and his hand is upon us in Jesus name. Amen. 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 And amen.